from Wisdom Preserved and we recently got some cute little kittens. So I'm going to build a cat tower and I wanted to show you how to do it. Now I'm doing it with all recycled materials, but you could go buy some at the store too. Your first step is gonna to be to cut some three quarter of an inch plywood. Now the base is going to be 15 by 20. The top, you're going to do 22 by 17 so that you have an inch lip on each side. And then you'll do an 11 inch octagon. So you cut an 11 inch square and then you go ahead and you cut the corners off. Don't worry if it's not absolutely perfect. The cats won't mind and it'll still look good. And then you're going to cut your trim pieces for the ends of the top. So that's going to be 17 inches and this is one and a half inches wide. Then you're gonna cut your other trim pieces and these have to account for both the top and the other trim bit. And so that's gonna be 23 and a half inches long. In addition, you're gonna to wanna to cut your posts. I did these out of four inch by six inch, so the actual cut is three and a half by five and a half, unless you're doing a rough cut wood. And for the shorter one, it's gonna be 14 inches long. And then for the taller ones that are the main posts, they're gonna be 40 inches long each, and you need to do four of those. Now, I've already cut all of these and sanded them down, but you'll notice I went ahead and I left some character to it, which is really what I like because I want this to kind of have a rustic look. If your wood doesn't look rustic enough, you can go ahead and add some vinegar um, and maybe whack it a couple times with a hammer. I'd probably do the hammer first and then the vinegar, and, and that helps give it that older look. Um, now for my plywood pieces, I actually repurposed some, um, some cabinet backing. And so it's got a little bit of stain on it already, but that's fine. I'm just going to play with that a little bit. Um, so for me, these ones are not going to get any stain. I'm just going to polyurethane them. And for this one, I will go ahead and do a dark ebony stain so that there's some color differences between the posts and these. Plus, I don't really like the whole orange look as much. So, so we're going we're gonna to do the ebony just right over the top. I've sanded everything down a little bit so that it'll take stain better. I really prefer to put my stain on just using an old rag and some gloves. I feel like it gives me a little bit more control over, over where the stain goes as well as um, making it so that I don't have any brush strokes. Now that I've polyurethane the posts, I'm going to go ahead and go back over the stuff that I stained and polyurethane that as well. While you're waiting for your wood to dry, you can go ahead and cut your carpet. Now, ideally, you're going to want it to go three inches farther than the bottom piece of wood on each side. For us, ours was a remnant, so we only have an inch and a half on these two sides. I'm going to make it work, but ideally, you want the three inches all the way around. We just have the three inches on those two sides. Additionally, I've marked both where the bottom piece will go and where the posts are going to go because we don't want the soft carpet underneath where the posts are because we want those to have really good contact with that bottom board. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is cut that out. The next bit of carpet that you need to cut is a piece to go over your hammock. And the hammock was made out of an eight inch PVC pipe. Now, you could probably use some of those um, 
concrete tubes, the ones that are made out of cardboard, that would work too. We have Maine Coons, so I really wanted something that was going to be uh, really strong and sturdy so that I didn't have to worry about them breaking it later on if they end up being, you know, a 25, 30 pound cat. So I made this 14 and a half inches long. I just cut it on the table saw. And then after I cut the tube, I went back on the table saw and I put the guard pretty close, probably about three inches from, from the blade. And I just kind of used it to run this next to it and, and cut down the length to make sure I got it nice and straight. And then I picked a point a little bit less than halfway so that I could cut the other side because I want, I want these holes that you drill through. This is going to be for hanging it with the rope and you want those to be down one inch and over one inch and you want them to be large enough for the rope to go through. So because of that, those need to be at the halfway mark. So you need to be like one inch above the halfway mark when you cut this section out. When I cut the carpet, I cut it at the exact length that this was, and then I checked it to make sure that it was, it was going to be the right distance. Now you want to start on the bottom portion because that's not going to be seen as much, not going to be bothered as much by the cats. So we'll start right here and we'll work around the edge and down through and over. Uh, it's really ideal if you leave a little bit of extra and then you can just trim it off at the end when you match it up. I did it exact, so hopefully it's gonna work out for us. I'm gonna do a mixture of wood glue and glue gun to try and connect this here. I have two glue guns going because they're just the small crafting variety. Really one of those big industrial ones would work best but you know, you work with what you've got. Okay, and mine are just warming up. Now that we have this completely glued in, wrapped around the edges and meeting at the back, what we wanna do is just make sure that that back section looks really good. And it does actually, you can hardly even tell where it's at. So I'm not gonna mess with that a whole lot because I'm really happy with that. The next piece that we need to look at is this right here. You see how you can see the green of the PVC through that? Now I'm gonna trim some of these longer strings and then I'm gonna put glue from the glue gun in between those and just kind of press the fibers together and that'll hide that end. You can see now that we have this done, there is no little bits that are showing, completely covered, has a nice little seam here, won't even be able to tell. The only thing that I have left to do is to cut my holes back in so that I can put the rope through. And I'll just do that with a razor blade. This basket is 15 by 12 inches. What we're gonna need to do first is cover the handle with rope because that's something that the little kitties are going to want to be chewing on and climbing on and it's going to be just perfect for them. I'm going to do that using a mixture of the wood glue and the hot glue. With our basket handle covered with the rope, we're now ready to start putting in the stuffing. I just cut it a slightly bigger than the outside edge just because this tends to be a little bit tighter here than it is right here. And this is just packing foam. You could get high density foam from the craft store to put in if you wanted. 
And now this is snug enough. I'm not even going to worry about gluing it. I'm just going to pop it right in there. And this here is part of the fleece that I have had around for a while and I've been looking for a purpose for it. And so this is finally it. And I just cut that to fit. I considered gluing this piece in here, but eventually I decided that because I might want to take it out and wash it at some point, I would just leave it separate. To make the feathered ring segment, you need to cut a one and a half inch segment of the eight inch pipe, the same one that you use to cut for the hammock. And then you drill a hole through it, just the size of the rope, not the rope, slide it through and glue gun the feathers as well as the twine, wrapping it around it about three times down at the base there. And you can see that it moves really nicely when you, when you touch it and so it'll be fun for the kitties. Now our next step is just to wrap this entire round with rope. And I'm gonna go ahead and try using clamps this time because I think that'll save my fingers a little bit. So that is one cute cat toy that is all ready to be put on the tower. With the prep work done, it's time to start making the cat tower itself. I really like to use the three inch self tapping wood screws. And now you're going to want to position the pillars on the 15 inch side of the bottom. So you have the six inches here, the four inches to the front and to the back, just to kind of help you orient. And I like to do at least three, if not four screws into this, because this is the base, I want it to be really stable. Line up your wood right at the corner really well. I'm going to put the four screws in here and then we're going to repeat it around all the four other corners. Now that our bottom is attached to our pillars, we're going to flip it right side up and attach our carpet. This is where it's so beneficial to have those cut marks already. We can just slide it right on the top. It's a little bit of a snug fit, which is what you want. And then we're just going to push it all the way down to the base. With it all on the base now, what we're going to do is just staple right along the opening here. And then we'll flip it upside down and staple along the top. This is where it gets a little bit tricky because you need to cut that corner piece out so that it matches up just perfectly with this piece here. You have a little bit of wiggle room because of the fact that it has the shag and so you can kind of use that to hide any imperfections. By doing this with the glue gun, you're hiding any seams that could possibly have shown. Now we're going to take some of that rope and we're just going to wrap it right around the bottom, kind of as a transition in between that carpet and the wood. We're just going to go one time around. So what I'll do is I'll staple it on the inside, the two, and then I'll glue it all around it so that it doesn't move.
While the glue is finishing drying on those ropes, I'm gonna go ahead and put the bottom on. And by the way, I'm not sure if you noticed, but I really found those clamps integral to holding them on until the glue was able to dry. You can hold it yourself, but I mean, who wants to? So let's go ahead and put the top on. Now mine has a stained side and a painted side. Now the top is gonna to be completely covered by the padding. So I'm gonna put the stain side down. And you'll be able to see that if you're looking from below, which maybe it's just the cats that are gonna enjoy that part. Now this one is designed to go one inch in from each edge. So I'm gonna grab my measuring tape so that I can make sure I'm right spot on and my screwdriver and we're gonna get this put on. Again, I'm gonna use the three inch screws for this. This is gonna be the front of my cat tower. So I'm going to take the smaller pillar and put it right in the corner because this is where we're gonna put just a little platform for the cats to climb on. This will be more of their lounging area, but this will be a chance for them to just get high up and feel like they're, you know, high in a tree or whatever it is that cats like so much about being high. It's time for us to put on our platform. I'm just going to center it on the post and screw it right down. This will be covered too. Uh, there'll be some portions of it that are showing, but the center section of it will be covered. The last structural piece that we need to put on the cat tower is just our little trim that goes around the top platform here. I'm going to use finishing nails to put the trim on. Putting in the little stairs is the next step. And what I'm gonna use for that is these three and a half inch PVC pipes. They have a opening here of two and three quarters and they are 10 inches long. Additionally, I have put in a little half an inch notch here so that the rope can go through it. And I have that same half inch notch going at a diagonal on one of on one of the rounds for each one. So we have their little plugs that are two and three quarters. In addition to having the two that have the notches, you also need two that don't have notches. And those are just going to be the plugs at the end. The other ones are going to be the part that you attach it to on the tower itself. I'm just going to put these together using one and five eighths inch um, sheetrock screws. It's not a real picky step. This one. So starting by using the side that's not notched, you'll want to put in the round, the plug that's not notched. Now the way I ended up doing mine is I actually drew a circle on it and then I just you know, did straight cuts all around it until I finally got down to that circle size. It'd be better if you could, you know, not have to deal with the going back and forth, but that's totally up to you. Okay, so you want to get it in there, but you don't want it in too far. You just want it blocking off the end, and this is where you're going to be able to attach the rope to. And I am going to do a little bit of a pilot hole here. Kind of guide my screw along. I just don't want it to get lost. And we're just going to do three screws on each plug. Because these steps are going to be holding some weight, I'm going to put them in with the three inch screws. I'm going to put the first one 
at 12 inches and the second one at about 32 inches. You can adjust it if you want to based on the size of your cat and kind of what you're thinking. But make sure that the little notched portion is pointing out because that's gonna be what allows the, the rope to go out and maintains that end. I'm gonna put the notched portion on the bottom just so I can kind of hide it a little bit more. With our notched circles here, we're ready to go ahead and install our stairs. So this is how you're gonna do it. You're gonna match up the notch and then push it back. We're gonna go ahead and start with the bottom one. So what I'm gonna do is place my rope inside here and I'll probably place a uh, good you know, two or three inches. And then I'm going to put it over this, matching up the notch with the rope. And now I have my rope coming out and it's ready for me to start wrapping so that I can have that stair. But I'm going to need to screw this on first. So that's what we're gonna do. One of the things that I wanted to point out with the PVC that's been wrapped is that you're going to be able to see a little bit of the PVC through it. I don't mind. I see a little green. I see a little gray. But if you don't like that, if you want it to blend a little bit more, then you may want to spray paint the PVC either a light brown or a dark brown, depending on the color of rope you have, and then it'll blend a lot better. The next thing that I'm gonna do is go ahead and attach our little toy. I place this on the front pillar, kind of right in between the two stairs. At this point, we're gonna put in our eye hooks so that we can hang up our hammock. Now for this, I like to do just a little bit of a pilot hole, just enough so that it's easy for the, for the screw to go in. It's a really tiny, tiny drill that I'm using right now. Um, and then I use the screwdriver to help me turn it. It seems to work a little bit better than just grabbing onto that little thing. Um, now I put it down seven inches and then in one inch from the very edge on each of the points. And then that should match up pretty well with our holes and we'll take rope through the eye hook and through the hammock and tie it off. For this next step, you need to cut four one foot segments of your smaller rope and then feed it through the holes that you made in the carpet on your hammock. Then we'll make a knot on the one side. After we get all four of those on here, we'll take it underneath and then we'll put it through the opposite side of the rope. We'll put it through the eye hooks. We'll knot it again and then we'll trim off any excess after we're sure that it's level and where we want it. So we got the hammock installed. We did find that it was a little harder to get through those holes than it had been before the carpet was on. So honestly what it took is for my husband, who was not quite as afraid of breaking it, to come and just 
take the drill and drill through the holes again, which grabbed the bits of carpet that were getting in the way and pulled them out. And then it wasn't too bad to go ahead and use the needle nose pliers. And, and then the tape wrapped ends of the rope and send it through. And you can see it turned out beautifully. We've got our nice little hammock already installed. Let's go to the next step. We're almost done with the cat tower. But now I really want to add some things to scratch because we've got the height, which that's really something that's important to cats is that they be nice and tall and high, but they also need things to scratch because not only do I not want them climbing on my counters, but I don't want them scratching up my couches either. So we're going to make them some nice little scratching posts with the rope. We're going to go ahead and add the rope to this top column and then we're going to figure out how much of the other rope that we have and see what we can do to disperse it on the other ones so that they have plenty of areas that they can scratch up all that they want. Finally got all the rope on there. I ended up using a hundred feet of the half inch and a hundred feet of the one inch. So a lot of rope and it just, it's very time consuming. So, you know, I've been going at this all day. I started at six o'clock this morning. It's about eight o'clock at night. Generally speaking, I'd probably break this up into multiple days. The kids are getting super excited to see the finished product. They really, really want to bring the kitties down. They're checking on me probably about every 10 minutes at this point. The next piece we're going to put on is, for me, a piece of fleece. Now, you could do this out of carpet. You could do it out of blanket. Um, I'm still kind of debating on if I want to make it a permanent structure or not. So, let's take a peek. First thing that I did is cut it according to the size and then notched out the corner for this post. Okay. So, see how this goes. It actually fits in here very nicely, uh, but I'm going back and forth on if I want it to be loose. I would like to be able to wash it, but I'm just not really sure I want them to like jump up and grab it and then have it go someplace. So I'm going to go ahead and staple this in. You can decide what you want to do with yours. So I'm super happy with how the fleece turned out on the top. I did decide to staple it around the entire side and a couple of times in the middle because I didn't want it to poof up at all. The next thing we're doing is we're going to go ahead and cover our little platform. For the platform, I cut a 9 by 9 inch fleece. And the goal of this is to not necessarily cover the whole thing, but have little bits of wood peeking out and just kind of have it going over the corner. We have all this lovely padding, which I think the cats will definitely enjoy. And it is time to add our basket. The final point, putting in our basket, it goes on the very bottom. I think for right now, I'm gonna leave it unglued. Eventually, I might decide that it needs to be glued in there, but I kind of like that I, can, that I can take it out for cleaning. And, uh, you know, if I decide to do a different basket or something else in the bottom there, it kind of gives me some options. So for right now, I'm going to leave it unglued. If you wanted to glue it, it would be really easy to do the wood glue on the bottom and um, maybe even a little bit of hot glue with it. Uh, you know, really this whole project's been like staples, hot glue, and wood glue. So kind of kind of a fun project went together pretty quickly let's take a look at the final product we've got our basket in the bottom 
We've got the scratching posts. We've got the little ladders on the side, the toy, the hammock, the platform, and then the taller tower there for the cats to stand on. So I say we get a couple kitties and see what they think of it. Materials list, go ahead and go to our website at wisdompreserve.life.